Welcome to another edition of On the Line of Scrimmage. I'm the host, Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Today, I'm joined here by Alex Cordova, and we're going to debate the following question. He challenged me to the debate the following question slash topic. Does Peyton Manning make the Broncos a better team this year? The rules are you get 30 seconds, I get 30 seconds, and then we go back and forth for 30 seconds. So we're going to see who wins this debate. And we're going to let the fans vote for the fans. After this debate, you vote at the bottom of this video who won this debate. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to let you go first. I'm going to kick it off to you first. I play defense first. So does Peyton Manning make the Broncos a better team this year? All right, Emery. I think you just made it so easy for me because I'm going to shut you down before you even get a chance. Listen, Peyton Manning can turn any playoff team, can turn any team into a playoff contender. Simple fact. Look at the Colts last year. Without him, 2-14. and 14. Basically, the same team he had just two years before when they were almost close to going a perfect 19-0. and 0. Obviously, they tanked it in at the end of the regular season and then they lost in the Super Bowl. But basically, the same talent. You take away the guy in the center and that's it. You've lost the whole team. The Broncos already have a solid running game without him. And a solid defense, although they were a little uh, skeptical against the run last year. But Peyton Manning jumps out to those big leads. The other team's not going to get a chance to run the ball. And with their pass rush with Elvis Lumerville, they're, they're going to get after the quarterback. So Peyton Manning turns the Broncos into a contender this year. I tell I you make a great argument, but I tell you right now, you're absolutely wrong. Because I look at the fact that Tim Tebow actually made that team better. He masked a lot of their deficiencies. You're going to find out this year how good Willis McGee he is, how much juice he has left in those legs. Tim Tebow, when you have a mobile, a mobile quarterback back there, two things it does. One, it makes those linebackers have to read. It makes them hesitant. It makes their backside defensive end stay at home. And that opens up running lanes. It allows the linebacker, it allows the guards and those tackles to get to the second level to block those linebackers, thus opening up the running game. So this year, the Peyton Manning that we're going to see Let's say if he's healthy, he's going to come in into a situation where the offensive line can't pass protect. The running backs are not as good as the yards may make them out to be. So I think this year, the Peyton Manning situation in Denver won't work out. I think Tim Tebow was a better fit for their offense. It forced defense to do other things that they were natural in doing. Peyton Manning behind that spotty offensive line as far as pass protection is concerned. And those running backs all have question marks. I don't think he'll be fine. All right, I'll get back to your point. You said that uh, T Tim Tebow, he masked a lot of Denver's deficiencies. Denver's defense actually masked a lot of his deficiencies. Through the first three quarters, he was horrendous. Couldn't move the ball, three and out consistently, and the defense kept them in games. So when fourth quarter came, Tim Tebow, you know, Tebow time, the magic happened. Tim Tebow, yes, he may, uh, to your point, you know, the linebackers, have to come in to the box whenever he's on the field because of his dual threat. But you have to understand something also. Peyton Manning is a master manipulator at the line of scrimmage. He sees the defense. He calls his plays accordingly. Remember, he he's his own offensive coordinator. The offensive coordinator uh, and head coach John Fox, they're going to trust him with everything. He sees guys at the line of scrimmage, check off, you know, a, a pass to the outside. He sees the box loaded up, check, uh, pass over the top. They're playing off. You know, off the receivers, okay, now I can hand the ball off to Willis McGahey, and he's going to have five, seven, ten yards before he even gets touched by the first linebacker. See, your logic right there is completely off base and completely wrong because you have to look at Peyton Manning is just one guy. Peyton Manning is not going to make Demarius Thomas lose weight and get off the line of scrimmage faster. He's not going to make Eric Decker catch the football consistently. He's not going to make that offense line pass protect better. He's not going to make uh, Willis McGee younger. He is not going to do those things. He, he didn't have much of a, he didn't have much of pass protection when he was in Indy too. Oh, he I had mean, a lot more pass protection. He actually had better talent around him in Indy. Think about those first round picks they had around that offense. They don't have that luxury in Denver. This offense will struggle. The defense will be solid. Again, but offensively, you mentioned Tim Tebow not had, struggling through three quarters. That's because the offensive coordinator didn't allow him to throw the football. The Chiefs game, the second Chiefs game, one pass play 
in the first half. That right there is telling me that he doesn't believe in a quarterback and he doesn't want him to throw the football. And that just limits what you can do offensively. If you allow someone to throw, he can't surprise you. So you mean to tell me Tim Tebow is worse than a Blaine Gabbard or a Matt Castle? No. And pure passing skills, I would say yes. But because of his dual threat, that that's what um, – defense fear the most and you're right about that the fact that you know uh linebackers have to stay up on him i get all that but when defenses are going to play press coverage on your receivers and you're, they're going to load the box what's tim tebow going to do then you, we saw it get exposed in the patriot playoff game we saw it in that same chief game that you were talking about Romeo cornell really kind of set the blue, blueprint in that game Press the receivers throughout the game. Tim Tebow could not find an opening because he is not a traditional passer. Then why would you set up an offense for him to be a traditional passer? You look at what the Broncos were able to do last year. That type of offense gave defense problems. Against Peyton Manning, you kind of know what you're going to get. You can expect what is going to happen offensively, and you can defense that. But uh, for a running game like Tim Tebow, that sort of type of spread attack, that option attack, makes it impossible to defend, which is why they had a lot of success offensively now we have to cut you off right here that was five minutes like we went for five minutes so we're going to let the fans vote fans you, you're out there you're watching this video who won this argument vote at the bottom of the video and if you feel as though you can debate me on anything that you feel strongly about just hit us up on football game plan hit me up on twitter at fball game plan with your debate topic hashtag fbgp debates